So following the double header we've had over the Easter weekend, this is how the Championship Relegation Zone is now shaping up. That's going to be the focus of today's video as we take a deeper dive into the bottom three, go through the games that have taken place on Easter Monday and just how they've influenced things at the bottom of the Championship. Quite a few twists and turns happening and I would love to get your guys' perspective on what you make of the bottom three right now and who for you are the three most likely sides to be relegated. As always, do drop a like if you're going to enjoy, but without any further ado, let's jump in. We'll start out at the bottom of the championship as Rotherham picked up their fourth win of the season to beat Millwall 2-1, delay the inevitable of them being relegated. But what this result also does is it does drag Millwall back into this relegation scrap. Had Millwall won this afternoon, like I think most people predicted, that would have put them up onto 47 points and almost home and dry. But by losing this one, suddenly they're sucked right back into this relegation scrap. They've still got a four-point buffer between themselves and the bottom three, but it magnifies the importance of this weekend's game, which Millwall have got away at Huddersfield. Lose that one, and then they've got a Tuesday game after that against Leicester, and suddenly they really could be in a sticky situation once again. Now, I obviously got to see Rotherham up close and personal on Friday when they travelled to Deepdale, and they were absolutely woeful in that game. On the back of that, I thought that Millwall would get the business done here, but after quite a shoddy performance, they've suddenly been dropped in it once again. Now, I do still think Millwall have enough within them to get themselves over the line. I do think there are still enough winnable games in their last six matches to accumulate the points they will need to survive, but they could have made things a hell of a lot easier for themselves if they'd won this afternoon. Fair play to Rotherham though, they've kept themselves fighting. We did mention in a preview recently that I wouldn't be surprised if Rotherham plucked a win from nowhere. They got that one here against Millwall, puts them onto 23 points, and like we said at the start, will deny the inevitable. They've not been relegated officially just yet. Hopping over then to Sheffield Wednesday, and it's not been a good Easter weekend for Danny Roll's side. They've only taken one point from their last four matches, and following some other sides in and around the bottom, picking up results this weekend. It really leaves Sheffield Wednesday in it with just six games to go. Well beaten in the end by Middlesbrough. Borough could have been even more comfortable had Greenwood converted that penalty near the end, but a 2-0 loss in the end. And what this result does do is I think it really magnifies the importance of Wednesday's next game, which is away at QPR. Lose that game and it's tough to see a way back for them, I think, with only five games to go after that matchup. Now, on the whole, Wednesday's form under Danny Roll, since he came in, has been very good, but because they were working from such a low point when he first got the job, any slips in form, which is probably what we can say they're in right now, were always going to be absolutely devastating to Wednesday compared to a lot of their other relegation rivals. Considering their goal difference is way worse than the likes of Huddersfield, Plymouth, and Birmingham, that's pretty much an extra point that Wednesday are having to make up on the sides around them as well. After those last two results especially, it feels like Wednesday needs almost a flawless run now between now and the end of the season, especially if the teams around them are going to continue picking up points. We saw Stoke against Huddersfield ending as a one all draw. Definitely think it, that point suits Stoke a lot more than it does Huddersfield. For Stoke, they've still got a decent buffer between themselves and the bottom three, a five point gap now. From Stoke's perspective, I think it was crucial that they didn't lose this match. They had to come from a goal down as well. And in the second half, they look like the more likely side to go on and win this game. If Stoke win one or two more matches now in their remaining six matches, I think that should be enough to get themselves over the line. For Huddersfield though, oh, they are right in and amongst this relegation scrap, aren't they? No wins in six for Huddersfield, only eight wins all season. And it's dropping points in match matches like this from a leading position, which ultimately I think will come back and haunt them come the end of the campaign. Dare I say it, I think their next match against Millwall this weekend is a must-win fixture for Huddersfield. I don't think a draw will cut it in that game. If they do win that one, that will seriously drag Millwall back into this relegation scrap. Huddersfield will only be one point off Millwall at that stage and could lift themselves out of the bottom three in the process. Throughout this Easter weekend though, 
on this whole showing, I am still massively concerned about Huddersfield, but they may just be given a saving grace because of how bad Plymouth are at the moment. And speaking of Plymouth Argyle, I think we can all agree this has been a disastrous weekend for Ian Foster's side. Back-to-back -back losses over this Easter weekend leaves them looking like the most likely side to drop into that bottom three. As of recording, it's now being reported that Plymouth will part company with Ian Foster as well on the back of that dismal run of form which has seen them only win one of their last 11 matches and what's been their real Achilles heel of late has been how bad they've been at home park, a real strength of theirs in the first half of the season that's completely deserted them of late. They've now lost their last five consecutive home matches and have failed to score in all five of those games. Uh, today against Bristol City being another prime example of that seemed like a bright enough start from Plymouth but as they faded as the game went on, Bristol City started to grow into it. And as soon as that first goal went in, I'm sure all the Plymouth fans had their thought process that they just weren't going to get away back into that game. What could still be the saving grace for Plymouth is that if they do indeed part company with Foster, which as of recording seems like they're going to do, their next game is up against Rotherham away. And win that match, suddenly they've got a fighting chance for survival again. Honestly, I think Plymouth survival bid, a lot of it at least does come down to their next game against Rotherham, which is on Friday. If they don't win that game, I think they're gone. But win it and potentially with a bit of a new manager bounce and suddenly we could get a completely different Plymouth side for the remaining few matches of this season. But Plymouth fans, I welcome your comments down below. But it wasn't all doom and gloom for sides at the bottom end of the championship this weekend as we saw Birmingham getting back to winning ways with all three points against Preston. Good job Birmingham did in this one. A much needed three points. Managed to nullify Preston for the vast majority of this game and then it was Jay Stansfield taking advantage of a slip or two in the North End back line to give Blues all three points. The result for Birmingham lifts them to 20th in the table and gives them a two-point cushion for the time being between themselves and Huddersfield, who are that side in 22nd right now. I think this one definitely wasn't a match for the neutrals, but the sort of results and performances we were expecting once they brought in Gary Rowett. Goals have been at a real premium for Blues of late, and I think that Gary Rowett's well aware of that, and what will be crucial for Blues surviving between now and the end of the season is keeping things tight at the back and then just nicking a result like they did here. Given their next games away at Leicester, I don't think that many people would fancy them to get a result there. It was absolutely crucial they got something over the line against Preston and the three points I'm sure will be even sweeter for Blues, especially with how they lost that game against QPR on Friday. The biggest winners at the bottom end of the championship this weekend though was Blackburn Rovers putting five goals past Sunderland to beat them 5-1. That's the first First time Blackburn have won in the championship since the 10th of February. It's only their second win during this calendar year. And boy, did they need it with a really tough looking fixture list to come. To be honest with Blackburn, I do think there have been a number of decent performances recently where they just haven't managed to get the result over the line. That last one against Ipswich being a prime example of that. Got into some really good areas and we're really knocking on the door um, for Ipswich, but ultimately losing that game 1-0. This one against Sunderland should not only instill confidence within that group for those remaining six, six matches that they do have enough in them to survive, but also it does give them a really healthy five-point buffer now going into their last six matches between themselves and the relegation zone. Arguably more so than anyone today, Blackburn's survival chances have been significantly boosted with all three points against Sunderland there. And I mean, it was Sammy Smoddix really setting the tone for that result with two goals fairly early on but with 45 points now they're not a million miles away from having enough on the board to get themselves over the line and another big winner at the bottom end of the championship today was QPR they made it back-to-back -back wins over the Easter weekend to give themselves now a six-point cushion between themselves and the bottom three and with the form they're currently in I can't see QPR being relegated from this point it was an absolutely massive result for them against Swansea in a game where they had to withstand quite a bit of pressure from the home side as well but being patient enough to wait for that chance to come along which ultimately fell to Steve Cook and he was able to capitalise. What's been a massive asset for QPR on this good run of form recently has been their away record and especially their defensive structure away from home which Sifa Wentes has been so good at coaching into them.
them. They've now only conceded one goal in their last four away matches, and even that came against Leicester. With the way they're playing right now, the fact that their next two fixtures are up against Sheffield Wednesday and Plymouth, where I think a lot of people would fancy them to get a few points out of each of those fixtures. I think they're looking pretty nailed on for survival now. 16th in the championship. What an Easter weekend that was for QPR. There we have it, guys. At the end of play today, how are you seeing things in the championship relegation zone? Do let me know down below. Some massive wins at the bottom end of the championship. If I had to call it right now, I think that obviously Rotherham are already gone. My fears over Sheffield Wednesday have grown significantly over this Easter weekend. And then that last spot really seems to be between Plymouth and Huddersfield right now with a lot of other sides picking up results this weekend. But as it tends to be in the championship, anything could happen. I'm sure a bunch more twists and turns will unfold over these final six matches. But apart from that, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like and I'll see you all in the next one.